Hi guys, so today's video is going to cover an interesting British armoured vehicle, the A46 light tank, the last of the A numbered vehicles. The origin of the A46 and its descendants, the FV300 family, began in the middle of the Second World War, 1943. At this point, the United Kingdom and the United States discussed that, for the while at least, the US would provide enough tanks and war materials so that the UK could begin to scale back its industrial output that had been operating in high gear since the retreat from France, and concentrate on new production capacity. The UK, while seeing the benefits of such an offer in the short term, did not want to be more indebted to the US than it already was, after having grudgingly been compelled to share much of its indigenous technology so far, such as radar, the meteor engine, things like that. The thought of being further chained to its creditors was not something the UK particularly wanted. The British thus decided that future reliance on US technology and control was unacceptable, both from a sense of fiscal foresight and partly out of a wounded sense of pride. Britain therefore proceeded to build and develop light tanks of its own, albeit at a slower pace, and while many American lend lease vehicles were deemed perfectly adequate, the UK also desired to adjust the balance in its own forces and sense of self-dependence by producing its own light vehicles to replace the American M35 Honey light tanks which were in service at the time, and aimed to have its own equipment at the war's foreseeable end and in post-war service. The War Office settled on designing the next generation of light tanks and the platform chosen was to be based on the older pre-war light tank Mark 7, the A17 Tetrarch, and the A25 Harry Hopkin light tanks that were in service. Notably reusing their unusual steering systems. This required any steering to be done by curving the track via a steering wheel, along with additional skid steering using girling internal expanding brakes that could be used for sharp turns. The whole suspension was carried on four bulbous, independently sprung road wheels on each side. The Tetrarch Mark I, or Light Tank Mark 7 A17 Vickers No. PR51, had been produced by Vickers Armstrong in the late 1930s and saw very limited action in World War II. Armed with a two-pounder gun, or 40mm, and only lightly armoured, its overall career was unremarkable, but it did see some limited service with the UK and Soviet forces, and had later trials in Switzerland. The second tank, light tank Mark 8, A25, also known as the Harry Hopkins, after President Roosevelt's chief diplomatic advisor, was a later design by Vickers Armstrong in 1941, and built by Metro Camel, using many of the lessons gained in developing the A17, such as a larger turret and thicker armour, marginally so. The same suspension was also used on the Electo, or 95mm SP mounting M129. There were serious delays in the development of the A25 during the early design phase. The light tank concept had been somewhat out of favour in some circles, due to the losses in France the prior year, and ongoing problems with the vehicle's development led to late delays. By 1943, only six A25s of the thousand initially ordered had been produced, and the UK was now equipped with the American tanks. Once the order in 1943 came through for a late war, post war light tank to be developed, Vickers quickly picked up the contract, as although its previous light tanks had not been combat successes, they did employ one of the essential criteria listed, namely to employ a steering system that required little power, such as that found on the A17 and A25. The official reason for wishing to reuse this steering system stemmed from the fact it required a smaller engine and lighter transmission over conventional suspension systems, thus a smaller and lighter frame could be built, which was highly desirable in a light tank. This feature was particularly important for the A46 which was expected to be air portable without disassembly. Although the ability to be easily dismantled prior to transport was included if required for long distance or bulk flights. Lessons from the Tetrarch and, to a lesser extent, the M3 M5 tanks had also been taken into consideration. Vickers decided they wanted a gun capable of being effective against other light and medium tanks, yet still have a useful high explosive round, and ideally share commonality in parts or munitions with current guns in service. The new vehicle, therefore, was to mount the 77mm quick firing gun, which was being tested on the new A34 Comet medium tank. In fact, the 77mm gun had been given the highest priority to the A46 development initially over that of even the Comet. 
Although debates were held at the tank board about this, as some saw the turretless Stuart vehicles fulfilling the role of the scout vehicle, using eyes and ears to relay positions and information back over direct engagement, while others believed that the vehicle should be able to engage targets of opportunity where possible. Ultimately, the former would win the debate, at least while the UK was at war, and it was felt that the 77mm should be prioritised for the Comet and cruiser tanks, which would actually see combat, while any new vehicle might be too late to enter the war, which was now coming to a foreseeable end. Two prototype layouts were to be designed, so that the new hull could be easily adapted into other purposes if required. One version would have a rear-mounted engine, and another built with a forward-mounted engine. The tank type would initially have a rear engine, whilst the load carriers and self-propelled guns would have front engines. Vickers happily agreed as it saw future growth in this system, and it was one of the UK's first preconceived modular designs that could allow the chassis to be reused for a variety of roles rather than alterations made after the fact. Although Vickers had not even presented any official plans, the War Office ordered 80 vehicles to be built in 1944, once again just rushing things off the drawing board. Fast forward to November 15, 1944, and the 44th meeting of the tank board took place. It's recorded in the minutes that the meeting had taken place at Chertsey on the 15th of November to consider the paper proposals as requested for the light tank rolls. Mr Little, a chief designer at the time, explained the three layouts were in the same building and that the board agreed to review them after the meeting was over. The next minutes, held on the 3rd of January 1945, noted a mock-up of the gun tank would be ready by the end of the month for inspection and that no real issues had thus hindered the project. Production should begin around 1946, it was thought. It was noted during the minutes that the light tank concept looked extremely good and should appeal psychologically to the troops. The 46th tank board minutes also give the first full description of the A46, or to use the Vickers code, M132 and M131, with the former to have the front engine and the latter the rear mounted block. Vickers had managed to build one full-size mock-up gun tank before the war's end, as well as a series of wooden display models. By 1944, the War Office was looking at three new lines of tanks. These would consist of the A45 series, which would go on to become the FV200 Universal line, the A41 line based around the heavy cruiser Centurion, and a new Vickers light line. Each of these lines would have its own gun tanks, command vehicles, bridge layers and support vehicles on the same chassis. By 1946, a new threat had begun to loom on the horizon, with American and Soviet clashes in ideology mounting. Much of Europe was still in tatters, but with the Soviet problem growing, the British began a slow but steady rearmament program. The aim was to phase out much of the older wartime stock and instead to focus on a new series of standardised vehicles. Each class and category would come under a new fighting vehicle designation, commonly referred to as the FV number system. These are detailed in the Fighting Vehicle Divisional Notes number 15 dated November 1946, where it is outlined how all vehicles were to be classified in categories between 1 to 19, with 00, 0 as the basic platform and subsequent numbers to be subvariants of this. For example, FV200 was to be the series of heavy vehicles, with 00, 0 as the stock model. FV 201, for example, would have been the gun tank, while the FV-209 would have been a armoured recovery vehicle, built on the same chassis, and so on. Each possible vehicle combination had been considered, although the numbers would stretch far further than the original 19 and deviate over the years. The A46, therefore, has the dubious honour of being the last of the A-series numbers. With these FV numbers, a standard series of engines would also be introduced. Heavy tracked vehicles would have the 800 horsepower meter fuel injected engine. Medium tracked vehicles would have a 350 horsepower meteorite engine. And light tracked vehicles would have a B80 Rolls Royce engine. By 1947, A46 testing had switched to a front engine arrangement and the design process was making steady headway. It was hoped that all vehicles developed from this would have the same layout. The engine and gearbox would be at the front right hand side and connected to the rear drive sprocket via a centerline shaft. Vickers decided to add stowage bins to the back of the vehicles to increase ammo capacity and modify their drawings accordingly. 
They also decided that a four-man crew would have been too cramped for the long-distance type of activity that a light recon tank may have been required to carry out. As there was no compromise on the gun itself, Vickers passed over to the Ellswick department who began working on an autoloader for the 77mm gun. The A46 did not go on much further from this point, although work had begun on a full-size mock-up. The vehicle's specifications had changed completely and the project had eventually become an experimental fully enclosed APC named CT26. This was one of the first true APCs, having a fully enclosed compartment, rear drop-down hatch for disembarkment, and adequate seating, as well as protection from chemical and biological hazards. However, the UK, for reasons I have not yet found, chose not to use this vehicle, and stuck with testing the older, inferior Oxford and Cambridge carriers. The requirement for a new light line would instead move over to a new family, the FB300 series. A46 never left a legacy, nor did it introduce any features that would revolutionise tank design. Much of it will remain a mystery, and its novel features such as the Ellswick 77mm gun will remain so. If a footnote could be added to the pages of tank lore, it's that the A46 was the last of the A numbers, and the last of the well-armed and armoured light tank designs, with all subsequent vehicles mounting either low-velocity 76mm guns, or the 30mm Raden cannons. She is, if anything, the missing link between doctrines. Well, chaps, I hope you liked that little discussion on the A46. Um, if you did like this, do let me know. Give me a little like or subscribe or one of those little thingy bobs below. And uh, until next time, doodle pip.